Hey, what's up, folks? I'm going to talk a little bit more about Parcel, the web application bundler. I did a video on this uh, a little while ago, and I really, really liked it. And I've been using it on some projects. And when I first talked about Parcel, there are a couple of things that I didn't quite know how to do that I, I, I hadn't figured out. I hadn't really figured out how to do image minification with Parcel. Uh, there were some problems with progressive web apps, both building a service worker cache and uh, moving the manifest.json file was, was doing weird stuff. And I didn't really know how to just copy over static, act, static assets into uh, your, your distribution folder for or sending out and I do have some projects where there are static assets I don't want loaded at runtime things that are like our our community compass site quality of life has a whole bunch of JSON and markdown files for data and meta that I don't want to load at uh, page load because Somebody might use the app and never touch three quarters of that data, and I don't want them to have to wait for it. So that, there are static assets for some of my projects that I need to copy. Now, for all of those things, I didn't solve those through Parcel itself. Uh, there is an image min plugin for Parcel that uh, doesn't really work. Uh, what I did for image minification is I kind of decided this isn't something I should be doing as part of my project builds anyway. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to uh, recompress the same images over and over and over every time you build a project. It's something you, you do once. And there isn't a great reason to keep your uncompressed on what you want to serve images in your app folder when you're developing either. So I, essentially what I did is I made, eh, I'll show it to you. Let me, uh, let's see. Uh, I made just a node file that uh, uses image min and some plugins. GIF sickle, though I don't really use GIFs. Uh, Moz JPEG, PGQuant, and SVGO for SVG stuff. And I ba basically, this is a command line thing that I link to RI alias in my ZSHRC. You can do it in your Bash, Bash RC or whatever. And I can just do image min and then uh, an in argument for the in directory and an out directory target for the app directory and it'll just process anything. There's not a whole lot interesting. Th this does the whole image minification right here. So there, there's there's nothing. All this other code does is stats because image min doesn't output stats. It doesn't tell you, hey, this compressed, you saved X percentage of space and this many kilobytes of space and, and I kind of want to know that. So I made something that does stats. I'll put this code in in the blog post associated with the video. That's what I'm doing for image optimization. I just moved it out of my regular uh, uh, web development workflow because it's something that you should really only need to run when you get a new image. Uh, the other nice thing about that is if you put image min in your or some image min plugin in your regular workflow or project on GitHub, uh, that a lot of those components are compiled. And some users, particular Windows users, if they're using that project, may not have a C compilation environment set up, and it will just provide them with headaches. So getting that out there helps, helps there a bit too. So I have a little image minification. Uh, Go back to the little sample project I set up. And I made, I did, I did everything related to the progressive web app pretty much. And some other issues are all being handled through things outside of parcel. And 
what I'm using for that is a plugin or not plugin a dependency called shell JS shell JS is uh, uh, let me see here I think I had this up somewhere yep shell JS is a it's basically a JavaScript re-implementation of a bunch of Linux command line stuff because all I'm really using for it is using it for is, is cp-r to copy folders and subfolders and rm-rf to just totally wipe something out. And you can do that just with, you can put command line stuff in your package.json and run it with npm or yarn, but the command line stuff, depending on the platform, might be different. Using something like Shell JS makes you it, it lets you get rid of those differences, so it'll it should just work on any platform. What I'm doing with Shell JS is when I start a project in development mode, I'll run this copy, and copy just does a cp minus r app slash static, and it copies that to the disk. So in my app folder now, I have a static folder. And that can have folders and subfolders and content and whatever you want in there. And then it just gets copied over whole cloth. So if I do a, uh, we'll just start in develop mode and see if we can open it in our browser window. Yay, here's the world's most boring thing. So basically, this is the same thing you saw last time. It's a view component just to show view works and a picture just to show that it was moving pictures the way it's supposed to. So this is up and running. It's built this disk folder. It made a static folder in it. And there we see our high dot text. And if you wanted to, you could put a slash there and it'll just get the contents of static and dump them there not into a static folder. Uh, however you want to move that around is fine. So now I have it moving static assets. When it does a build for uh, production, it runs this clean script. And all that does is remove the dist folder and then move the static assets and then parcel builds all of its stuff. And that's another problem I need to, to do with parcel is it doesn't clean up after itself. So if you're running in production, then run a build, you're going to have a bunch of extra JavaScript and CSS and what have you files in that distribution folder because it hasn't, hasn't cleaned those out. So I'm cleaning those out when it runs for production, just using shell JS. And essentially it's just running a rm-rf on that disk folder. So that's doing the cleanup. That's moving static assets. There's one other JavaScript folder I'm running to build the service worker stuff. And two of the things you need for a service worker is your, your manifest file and your service worker JavaScript, which can be empty. And that just means it won't, all it really does is it'll enable it to add to the desktop. It uh, won't do any pre-caching. Uh, I'm using as part of the build, what it what it does is it runs this clean, which cleans out the distribution folder, moves over to static assets. Then it runs a parcel, and then it's built using the service worker code. So the service worker, it's using Workbox Build, which is the new thing from Google. It replaces their SW Precache service. So I'm giving it a directory and types of files I want to be cached and where I want to write that. And this don't cache bust URLs matching. I can't criticize Google for making an incomprehensible acronym there. I spelled the whole thing out. Uh, that's something they recommend if your build tool puts a hash in the file name. And with parcel, it actually just replaces a whole file name with a, a hash. 
So you'll see in this distribution folder, these are all hashed out. Uh, so I'm just saying when you have a 32 character name, it's a hash and don't bust cache URLs. So you look at the service worker at builds, you'll see the uh, files it references, and it hasn't built it again because I'm in I'm in play mode. I'm in I'm in uh, development mode. Uh, for things that the file name is a hash itself, it doesn't add this revision thing because the revision thing is really part the file name. And that's something they recommend in Workbox Tool. I don't know how big a difference that makes, but that's that's how you do that with a little bit of regex. So there's one other thing you need for a service worker, and that's your web manifest. And I kept getting thrown off by that because I'd reference it as manifest.json because it's the a web manifest is JSON. And that would screw parcel up because it'd see in your index file include for a JSON file, and it would monkey it monkeys with that the way it would do any kind of JavaScript, which was no good. Uh, it turns out uh, Web manifest, the extension for a web manifest uh, in the in the spec for PWA is actually dot web manifest. I've never seen it expressed that way because it's a JSON file. That's the actual official extension. So just by changing the name of that manifest to dot web manifest, it now copies that over correctly as a web manifest. It's it's minified it here for us. Uh, and it's it's even where I was putting in the images for uh, the uh, what you might call it so the icons. It's it's also hashed those as well. I'm gonna move that over. Did did all that without any uh, interference for me. So now as dot web manifest, it keeps that proper extension and doesn't screw with the JSON other than minifying it, and everything seems to work super cool. So that handles all the progressive web app stuff. So everything is pretty happy. If we do a yarn run build, it will clean up that dist folder. Uh, I've noticed that uh, come on, update you dog. Uh, let's just we'll just open up file browser. I've noticed that uh, uh, Visual Studio Code sometimes doesn't update this disk folder after it gets wiped out and rebuilt because this is what it's saying it has but it really has uh, uh, the whole the whole party is in there. See, it's rebuilt that and cleaned that up so we don't have any of that uh, extraneous stuff. So it's all built the way it's supposed to be built. Anyway, that's how I solved all those problems. Uh, and they weren't significant problems. And I just solved them outside of Parcel. There might be some Parcel plugins that do this stuff, but it's so relatively simple and straightforward. I just did it by hand. And you see from my package.json, it is all still relatively simple, like building with uh, a CSS with post CSS and CSS next and JavaScript with Babel and Babel preset ENV um, and doing service worker stuff and doing our other stuff related to service worker and cleaning up and that sort of thing and doing view uh view development i'm not using view components here because i'm kind of moving away from that just using view as plain old javascript see this is my entire list of dependencies for the project it's view and workbox build for service worker and shell js to run shell like commands without it breaking on some systems our post CSS parcel bundler and our Babel preset environment. And that's it for the whole project. 
uh, zero config for a lot of the parcel stuff and it just kind of works. So that's how I'm doing that. Uh, I'll put some of this code over in the, the blog post. You'll see a link to that in the show notes on YouTube. Uh, I say I did try Webpack version four alpha, or maybe it's beta now. That is alpha or beta. Because uh, I try Webpack every couple of months just to see if something's clicked in my head with it or not. Because I know it's all in my head. People, people like Webpack. And there's no clicking. It's supposed to be zero config in version four, and it kind of is. If you just want to do JavaScript bundling, period, and your folder structure is set up just right, and your JavaScript file is exactly where Webpack thinks it is, uh, it is zero config, and it and it just does that. But it's I can't think of a, an instance where that's all you would want from your your build tool. So it's really not zero config. And I I came to the same conclusion every time I I try it. I, I reach the same conclusion that for JavaScript, it's pretty straightforward and very nice. And the bundler makes really really tiny uh, bundles. So that works well. And for everything else you're going to do in a build, it feels like it's kind of a hacked on afterthought. Like CSS processing or, you know, SAS or what, whatever you're doing, it just, it just feels like it just wasn't designed for that. And it's because the entry point is pointing to the JavaScript file. And for a regular web app where you're doing CSS and all this other stuff, that's not where you enter. You enter in the HTML file. And I think that's why parcel makes a lot more sense to me. And it doesn't feel like it's a hack getting all this other stuff working. I tried, I was trying Webpack 4. I got the JavaScript working with Babel and everything, just piece of cake. And then I said, okay, let's do some CSS. And I could not get it to spit out a CSS file <laughs> to save my life. Uh, every code example I tried would either didn't do it or it would bomb. And it could have been because I was on, on version 4 alpha. But yeah, I'll try Webpack again in a couple of months and report back and see if anything's clicked. Now again, I know it's just me because people like Webpack. Anyway, that's how I solve those problems in Parcel. And I'm using it as a project now and I'm super like it. I will get you later. Bye-bye.